In this video, I'll show you how to create a SQL Server connection and we'll also look at uh, how to read um, the SQL Server table data and also how do we uh, write data into SQL Server. And also we'll be looking at the advanced properties um, on the commit size and the buffer size and how do we uh, do an uh, insert else update and uh, how do we create table on the fly without doing anything on the database. All right, so let's get started. Uh, I'll show you on the um, studio. So as a best practice, I've added a note here and also I'll be using uh, the metadata connection uh, for all the connections. Um, all right, let me go ahead and uh, create the connection first. For that, I'll be dragging uh, this metadata connection and I'm calling it as DB connection. So this is where um, you create a connection with uh, SQL Server. Uh, when you see the component details, uh, it, it, uh, it says the repository. So we have already stored it in the metadata and uh, it has got all the connection details as well um, and there is an option here uh, to create a connection pool uh, you basically you create a one connection and uh, if you have like 100 uh, um, database connectivity you can use the shared name uh, you can specify uh, some shared connection and you can use this uh, name for the connection pooling uh, this is one of the performance tuning uh, technique as well uh, so this is how you uh, create the connection component and if you go to the advanced settings you have an option to uh, perform your auto commit as soon as uh, the data is loaded so this is one way of doing it uh, the other way is um, doing the commit and close go ahead and uh, type in db commit on your palette and you should be able to see a db commit uh, all right so this i'll be using uh, at the end of the um, uh, job once uh, the entire workflow is you know complete so for that uh, what I'll do is I since I have already have the connection open I'll choose that component to close it so this is uh, these two operations uh, they're also called as you know pre uh, uh, entry and exit points so those are actually attached with uh, the pre job and then the post job so pre job is when um, uh, this task is executed as soon as uh, the execution is started of the job and this is the end of the job so what happens it is going to create the connection and once uh, the entire workflow is complete it is going to go to the post job and close the connection all right so when you uh, double click and see the properties uh, there is a close connection uh, so this is how uh, you perform your commit and then the close connection Alright, so as a main job, uh, what I'll do is I'll go back to the metadata again. And as I said, uh, we should be always concentrating on reusing, um, you know, any uh, components. So I'll be dragging one of the table from SQL Server as a DB input. And uh, as you can see, um, the details, the basic details, for that input component uh, has got several sections here uh, since we have already created the connection I'm going to make a check mark on this uh, to use the connection uh, existing connection from the drop down I'll choose this DB connection too all right so this table has got uh, these fields so these are these automatically populated and also if you see the schema uh, it is already uh, populated from the database so we don't have to do any changes here um, and also on um, advanced settings you have a way to trim if you have any string values with um, uh, beginning or you know trailing uh, blank spaces you can trim uh, all the fields uh, all the string fields or you have an option to trim only the required field all right so these are all about uh, the advanced settings of the input component all right let's look at uh, target uh, component as well so in this case I want to create my target table dynamically uh, when I run the job I want that to be created instead of uh, doing it um, you know from the database so for that I'll go ahead and uh, drag this metadata again to the job design window uh, this time I'll choose it as DB output right let me maximize uh, job design all right so i have my connection ready i have my input component ready and my target um, component is also ready all we have to do is right click on row click on main and connect to the target component under the target component let's look at uh, the settings available 
Um, so as a part of uh, basic settings, uh, you get to see the type of database and then there is a repository connection and we already created the connection so I'm going to reuse the connection. Uh, otherwise what happens is if you have uh, 10 different components and if you create connection there will be 10 user connections on the database. Instead, um, you by using this existing connection you create the connection only once per job and if you have 10 different components you just leverage the existing uh, connection. So that's the um, one of the best practice as well. Uh, so this is how you drag in your uh, source and target. You connect it and then you set um, um, you know the target, uh, the basic settings. And uh, as you can see, now we are trying to create a brand new table. Uh, you can specify um, a target table name. I am just calling it as author underscore tgt. And when you see the action of the table, uh, there are several options. Uh, either you can drop the table and then recreate or just create a table uh, create table if exist if it does not exist drop table if exist and uh, create and clear table and drink table so there are several options uh, since our table is not there I would uh, create on this option create table if does not exist and uh, once that uh, table is created um, action on the data is insert uh, if it is an existing table and you have the uh, keys defined, you can perform an update or insert else update. Um, so this is used uh, when you are performing SAD1 type of uh, transmission, uh, wherein you have um, your incoming record is already present uh, with the changed data set. Uh, you can go with the insert or update uh, option. Um, and there are a couple more options uh, to update and delete insert if not exist uh, you can give it a try so for uh, this demo purpose I'll just give it as uh, insert and as you can see uh, the um, target uh, columns and uh, data type length everything is copied from the source so you'll not have any uh, manual work to do uh, if you use the metadata and also this uh, action on the table uh, setting alright so under uh, advanced settings you have um, an option to uh, create additional columns uh, if you want to add any extra columns or any identity inserts those can be added here uh, by clicking on plus um, this is based on the requirement you have otherwise you can just ignore it uh, and uh, you have an option to uh, specify the batch size um, basically this batch size um, is the size of um, number of records uh, in that particular batch if you have um, 100, uh, 100k records uh, it will be committed uh, in a batch size of 10,000 each so that is a significant and um, you can even run the query in a debug mode okay once this is done uh, let's go back to basic settings so now we are creating a new table and uh, let's go ahead and uh, save the job all right let me go ahead and uh, run the job okay so that job has started and as you can see it has already started uh, reading records from source and i have got uh, 500k records in my source now uh, the data is now successfully returned to this target all right let's go ahead and uh, check that table quickly Alright, so as you can see, all those uh, records are now populated into the forget uh, target table. And as you can see, all the 500,000 records are populated. That's all. Uh, this is how you make use of um, your uh, uh, SQL Server connections uh, to create, read the data, and then uh, process the data. And as, as I mentioned, um, it's always a best practice to create the metadata connections. Uh, and use a free job uh, to create connections and uh, close the connection and then reuse that connection uh, throughout your job.